I hope we're still recording. But here we are, uh, Minor Disturbance Radio. Um, first thing I want to get off my chest is this is the first time that we're going to be actually videotaping the show. So I'm going to change the format just a little bit. I thought that maybe the people that listen would enjoy this so they can actually see the ugly faces that are saying what we're saying. So, Oh, yeah. So welcome to Minor Disturbance Radio. And uh, tonight we're having some more Uncommon Stout from Bent River and our Kiss Cups. And... Uh, we're going to have a good time. So, <clears throat> Oh, and by the way, thanks to all the people that have clicked on the Minor Disturbance shows and, and listened to stuff. I know that listening to stuff about one band for an hour is kind of, you know, hard to do. But we're going we're gonna to get to uh, uh, to where you can actually see what a Minor Disturbance show was meant to be. And it's not really meant to showcase one band. It's actually just meant to be a show that we get on here and we talk about whatever we want to talk about and uh, some subjects that come up and uh, whatever's on our mind. Absolutely. But I'll tell you what, doing the three years hollow show and the 1152 show was such a blast. I mean, we had such a good time. Um, but the problem is I have to sit after doing that for four days to edit all that down and uh, make a show for everybody. And then by the time I put it out, I feel... Oh, my God, my wife's pissed at me. She hasn't seen me for four days. My daughter, you know, hasn't seen me and all that stuff. So we're going to try to do little uh, smaller bites this time. We're going to do, you know, more shows rather than one a month that's a big, long show. So Hopefully you like us like you like them. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> we'll, we'll see who the real Minor Disturbance Radio people are that want to hear what, what the hell we're talking about. So. Okay. And by the way, were you drunk when you got here, Jeff? No. Liar. Absolutely not. Absolutely lying. <laughs> Jeff's a liar. He he was down there at some beer fest or some shit trying all the... He's, te- he's yeah. texting me all day. Hey, let's talk about Kiss Records today, let's man, on the show. <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's, let's uh, talk how good they are and legendary they are. I think Jeff's nervous because we're actually on camera right now. Yeah. He's, see, I'm, he's not a rock star like me. I'm used to being in the limelight and having people look at my ugly face and make fun of me and shit. He's not used to that. He's used to being in the audience making fun of people. That's so. right. I judge people. No yeah, absolutely. Can see me in front, you know. Okay, so a couple, couple um, subjects here that I wanted to talk about. One is, uh, I don't even know if Jeff knows this, but I am now a world-renowned music video producer. Oh, yeah? When did this come about? Well, I don't know. It just happened. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, 1152 and I, we had such such a good time, and them guys are such good guys, and they were, you know, they, uh, well, here's what happened. So I'm starting to spend all my money on, uh, like, cameras and, and computers and stuff like that to do all the editing for these types of things. Microphones, and, you know, you can see this stuff isn't cheap, it's, you know, for a hobby. So anyway, so I'm buying all this stuff, and... uh I just get this, you know, I want to go try to see if I can do some cool editing stuff. Because I watched Davo's videos that he did for Three Years Hollow. I got inspired by that, you know. If you guys want to go look at, you know, threeyearshollow.com or wherever. Uh, the guy that did them videos for them, his name is Davo. And he's badass at what he does. He's really, really good. And so I got inspired by that. Not, not that I want to do that for a living or anything, but I just was like, well, hey, guys, let me come over to your practice and get you know, some footage of you, and then I can come back to my little you know, studio and just tinker around with it. Well, you know, I put together this video, and the guys in the band thought it was really, really cool, and they wanted to use it for their official video. So I'm thinking, you know... <laughs> I'm using a handy cam and a uh, you know a flip and right. you know and and, and I'm kind of really kind of embarrassed about that, but it did it did come out pretty good actually for you know a, it does look good and a lot of people have liked it. That's, you know. Absolutely, I mean you can't really tell that it was. I mean I, I really poured a lot of time into it obviously to make it look the way it did, you know. So I'm gonna go actually get myself a professional camera, not you know just so that I can at least get a little bit more professional footage of stuff and right. and tinker around see if that's any better but that was a lot of fun you know i mean i got to i got to stick a microphone on the drummer's head <laughs> and tape it on there for like the drum cam view right. you know yeah it was very cool and man when i got the footage back here the raw footage looks totally different than what the video looks like trust me but um them guys are a lot of fun and and what's what's interesting is when i was down there filming them you know <laughs> i'm like okay and they played the songs live all right 
so they weren't playing to a backing track because I had no idea I was really making a video. I just thought I was going to play with some footage and time it up with the actual CD song, you know, <laughs> and that was so hard to do. So, time to yeah, imagine. absolutely. So, but it was worth it because when it was done, it looked really cool. Oh, it did. A lot of I, a lot of people I've talked to have seen it and they just like, who did that? I'm like, yeah, Brian just went over there and put it together himself. And yeah, it was really cool. So, um, I was looking at uh, Facebook. When we do Facebook every day, I spy on everybody. So, I'll be keeping tabs on you people. But I noticed uh, there's a new band out uh, called The Dirties. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if the people listening know that I used to, for a while, I played in a band with uh, the singer of that band, uh, Lee Pakula. I'm sorry. Um, what, you know, he sings for Cheese. Anyway, I played with Cheese and and uh less lots briefly and uh long story short i saw some pictures on uh, the facebook and they're playing at uh i think uh martinis okay and i noticed that the pictures i saw it was lee was dressed like he did in uh in the less lots which is with the with the two ponytails and uh you know the okay. skirt and the thing like that right which i thought was kind of Odd, but I, you know, to each their own. This, you know, I'm not here. I'm not here to slam Lee at all. I mean, right. I, I have no problems that way. But what I thought was really interesting is uh, <laughs> there's a picture on there. See, when, when we were in uh, Lust Lots, he, he uh, Lee had a a little bit of you know, a difficult time remembering lyrics for songs. I mean, he had to learn a bunch of new tracks. yeah, like like 24 new songs. You know, and the lyrics are hard to memorize. You know, so you you got to look. And he had a little trouble with that. So. He had a trash can on stage that had lyrics in there, you know, and a light, and I think a can of SpaghettiOs and a and a and a bottle of vodka. The but necessities. Aside from that, that's what he had in the trash can, and and it was kind of obvious sometimes that he was looking at lyrics and flipping pages in there. But and so the the picture the picture on Facebook was of of Lee uh, reaching down between his legs and pulling something up or out and look like kind of looking down at it and i and the wife and i were joking today because we were like well it looks like lee found a new place to write his lyrics down so wow. yeah, on his scrotum so anyway i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> so <laughs> i've seen that picture <laughs> like i say i'm not bashing lee i just thought that was funny you know it's like that's a good place to keep the lyrics you know instead of the trash can it you can write them on his nuts so <laughs> but this beer is really good by the way guys and these kiss cups hold a lot of it they hold a lot of and it's not St. Patty's Day either. What the hell are you wearing that shirt for? It's just a shirt from. I figured Bent River might like a little bit of a advertisement. Yeah. So anyway, what about ben, your hot tamale shirt there? We're sponsored by by Bent River. We get we get beer to try. This show we didn't go get, get any new beer. We're stuck on the uncommon this time. It's hard to get away from the good stuff. It is because it hypes you up and it gets you drunk at the same time, and you cannot beat that, kids. So, yeah. Forgive me if I say something about somebody that you might like or know that I don't. Yeah. So. So what would you like to discuss tonight? Where do we start? Oh my God. It's a broad <clears throat> subject. Well, what's been going on? Let's see. Uh, like we talked about the dirties. I think that's cool. And by the way, the dirties. Uh, that's. I think it's Brandon Gibb from the Gibbs Brothers, and then uh, Eric Brittingham <clears throat> is the bass player from Cinderella. Now he was he the original bass player? Yes, he was. So, like, the videos that we saw, oh, like, Shake Me and all that shit, that was yeah. with the big old curly long hair. No, big straight blonde hair. He had big straight blonde hair. Yep, it was a, had a big up top. And then okay, see, I, I, w I was mistaken then because I thought that he was, was a dude. Watching, I was watching the video you were playing guitar. I might be thinking of Firehouse. Yeah, probably. Something like that. Yes, yep. So he's, he, so he's playing, it's Brittingham and uh, Brandon Gibb, I think, mm -hmm. and then uh, Lee from Cheese Pizza um, singing and man, you know, I've always told Lee he needs to get into a rock and roll thing to where he can just belt. Because the when I used to see Cheese Pizza back in the day, it, I was blown away by Lee's vocals. Right, uh, he's got that grit. You know, listen to if you ever want to hear Lee singing rock or metal music, look up. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, Nick, uh, Nikki Fox, right? Oh yeah, Nikki yeah, Fox, going way back. Oh yeah, man. You know what? He when when I was in a band with him, he asked me. Hey, will you? Uh, he had a cassette of some Nicky Fox stuff, and he's like, "Hey, can you turn these into a CD for me?" And I was like, "Absolutely!" So I came back to the studio and I was dumping them into my, because you have to listen to them real time. Okay. Because you hook up your tape player and listen to them real time going into the computer, and uh, you know it's late '80s 
sleaze metal right. stuff. But man, there was one song that I, uh, I and it's called "Do You Want to Do Me." Okay. Man, that song was kick ass. I thought for it, it would have been a song I would have dug. You know what I mean? Right. It definitely deserved a video. So anyway, Lee, if you ever want to get the band together, I'll produce the fucking video. <laughs> Anyway, so um, it's not going to be very good, though, just because you know, we're all on a budget here. Yeah. <laughs> and Lee's got a, a kid on the way, too, so he knows what he's going to oh. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 All right, back to the beer. we got to prioritize with the beer first. What we're going to have to learn how to do is to drink our beer at different times, because we, if we both take drinks of our beer at the same time, then there's this dead air, you know, and it gives everybody a chance to change the channel to the... Uh, They're supposed to drink at that point. Yeah. You, that's the form. So it's an all drink. It's an all drink. All drink. All drink. All drink. Okay. Yep. Let's see. And everybody. Okay. And uh, next order of business on fa in Facebook land is I noticed um, there's there's a couple guys. Well, no, there's not a couple guys. This is straight to the point. This is what this show is going to be about. But I have a buddy, Mark Shrupp, that just it, he's made it his life goal to piss off everybody's wife. <laughs> you know, because everybody likes Mark. He's a cool guy, but uh, he he's on this uh, I don't know agenda to put up you know sexy pictures of chicks and and half dressed and half naked, which I have no problem with, yeah. obviously. But a lot of wives do. My wife is questionative of it only because she's trying to figure out what point he's trying to make with that. But and you know, and my basic thing is unfriend him if you don't like the pictures he puts up because he that's what he'll say on his post unfriend me if you don't like it. and that's the truth fellas you know what i mean if if or ladies if you don't like what somebody posts on there just delete them yeah, you don't have to it. absolutely not so and and trust us us guys you know if we're scrolling through and you know oh their baby's doing this and oh their cat did that and the whoop boobs all right now their kid's doing that it's a good day if all of a sudden you see a little bit of cleavage doesn't hurt anybody because I know you girls are posting all them pictures of them guy, the firemen with the abs and the and the things and they're, you know. And they're not real. And they're not real firemen, by the way. And uh, yeah, they're not at real abs either. No, no, it's all photoshopped. Well, I was trying to think of what like six packs look like because I don't know what they look like. Yeah, I don't have any. I don't either. I have a pony keg on my. So. Okay, so so then it it, it comes down to. Um, when I was talking about the cheese guys and stuff, and I'm sorry, there's a lot of talking about them guys, but I'd love to get, I want to get John Nelson in here, the drummer, because he's he's gone way back in the scene as far as playing in a bunch of bands and and what a great drummer and and, and man. Um, Nothing but good things about John. When I go back and I look at the guys in the in Cheese Piece, I've never met uh, the guitar player until recently. Um, they call him Chops. Right. I think his name's Lenny. Sounds right. I've never met him either. Okay. Well, anyway, he, he's such a funny dude, man. If you go on Facebook, check him out because he does these uh, like live from his root cellar things, and he just plays guitar. And he's funnier than hell. I want to. I want to get him on the show really bad. You know, because obviously I just sit back and just let him talk. It'd be his show for one, and we'd actually get some likes and some listeners. Yeah. I'll drink. <laughs> All drink. <laughs> well, that's what this is for, right here. Thank you, sir. I gotta catch up. Yeah, I gotta work in the morning. By the way, I have actually have a real job. Well, not a, I, no, I don't. Yeah, you tried to play it off. Nobody was buying it. But I do have for for the first time in a long, long time. I actually have to do something. Get up early. And... I don't know about that. <laughs> That's debatable. But... Yeah. Well, this has got coffee in it, so I can have this for breakfast. Yeah. Anyway, we're humongous Kiss fans. So, as you can tell, with the Kiss cups and the Kiss records all over the wall here in the studio, and it, I was basically raised by Kiss, you know, um, because I didn't have a dad around. Where, and uh, so everything they said in their lyrics is kind of like what I use for my mantra in life, you know. And, and that's look where it's got me. <laughs> thanks, it's, Paul. Thanks, Paul. It's, it's formed in this direction. And, yeah. I've, and I've seen the, the the face paint and the makeup at Halloween. It was Ace Frehley. Well, you, you did want to be Ace Frehley. Absolutely. And you know, I've got pictures of my birthday party when I'm eight, nine years old. All the people dress up like Kiss. Mom was awesome. Anyway, I, I can be, I don't know how this is going to work, but I might be able to throw a couple pictures of that up as That'd we be cool. go through the thing. But I was raised in Rock Island, like below the hill in the hood. Okay. So I'm used to uh, culture, if you know what I mean. So, um, 
it was really funny because you come to my birthday party in the hood <laughs> and there's, you know, my friends were black kids, whoever kids, you know, because when we were young, black, white didn't it matter. Doesn't you know matter. what I mean? It doesn't matter. So anyway, so that that's kind of funny. You look at the pictures and, you know, we all got cake on our face and kiss makeup on. And was, oh, how they, how do you pick that? Where, how did that happen? I just, they were big at the time, I guess. I don't know. What do you mean? What, how do they like, pick what? How, how, how did that child pick to be Peter Chris and go with kiss and... You know, well, he didn't have a choice. I think my mom oh. <clears throat> picked the kids and said, okay, there's too many Pauls in the room. Oh. She was trying to spread it out, and she didn't know who the popular ones were. And who the Funny story, though, my mom did take me to my first Kiss concert. My mom was actually there with me. All right. Uh, we're standing in the front, and I'm, and I'm there with one of my buddies. I got the tickets for my birthday. It was in Dubuque, I want to say. The Five Flags? It was uh, Creatures of the Night Tour. All right. And so we we're, uh, we we get there. And, you know, we didn't have MTV. Well, we did, but I didn't, I couldn't see it at my house. And we didn't have Facebook and all this shit to where we could, you know, check on our, our bands like that. You know, mm-hmm. kids didn't have access to that type of thing. It was Friday night videos. Yeah. It, you would just all of a sudden be at the music store and see the new record from your favorite band and, and you know, or they would have a poster up coming soon or something. So you'd kind of know it was coming, but not really. Correct. And so, so Kiss is going on tour now and the record cover obviously shows uh, by this time, Peter had quit. I don't know this. I don't know if the picture uh, camera picks up this whole frame, but this is, that's Ace Frehley on the cover of the record. Okay, <laughs> and when I got to the show, you know, the big birthday present I got was two tickets, one for me and my buddy to go see Kiss and De- Dubuque or something like that. Five Seasons or five, whatever, five Flags Arena. Five Flags. You'd remember that. Yeah. So and it was who who was it was it Queensrÿche and Wendy on the Plasmatics opening yes, up. That sounds about right. right Holy line. shit! Yeah, what a billing. Holy shit! Early Talk about a kid coming into an arena, <laughs> and you're seeing and, and you know the, you, you know hair standing up on your you know it's the first concert I've ever been to, and uh, you know you walk in there and you, I had been listening to Kiss on a little record player with the built-in spe- speakers. It was like a briefcase you open up, yep. and you put the record on and. Ksh- and you know and then and the little speakers are you know yep and you're like putting your ears in there like it's not loud enough you can't get it fucking loud enough and then you walk into an arena yeah and you see what a what bass sounds like and what a real big concert sounds like anyway so we come into the place and i still think that ace Frehley is going to be there because my favorite guy in the band i come in i see a poster and it has obviously vinnie vincent on it in the ink 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 yeah, uh, ink, yeah. ink. Like that. is that what it's a and k a and i don't know yeah, yeah. people at home know yeah they know. but um you know vinnie vincent so he's got the, that and i'm like who in the hell is this butthole on this poster and where is ace Frehley? and where is ace Frehley? because you know so because you didn't know but and if it were in this day and age as soon as ace quit two seconds later it would be all over facebook and you know, Everywhere, yeah. so but I had no idea that he had moved on and it was a new guy. So right there at that show, I had to decide who was going to be my new. So that night, your birthday present, you had to make a big decision. Yeah, absolutely. And my mom, remember, my mom took me to this gig, and mm-hmm. she's she's kind of hip. My mom was kind of hip. She would be cleaning the house, listening to like Billy Idol and stuff, oh. you know. You know, and right. and because she got all freak, she got all she liked that part of the song where he's, he's talking about it, my leather's all wet and I'll sweat and I'll sweat. You know, and she's yeah. like, oh my god, he's sweating, <laughs> and he's talking about leather and stuff. So she was cool, you know. Wow, yeah. So she she takes us to the concert and um. She wasn't listening to the Captain and Tennille. Some of that too, some though. That too, she okay. did some of that. She liked she she did the disco thing. Right. She was a girl. You know, yeah. girls are girls are morons. They don't have any idea what good music is. Right. Right. Well, that's Unless you're a girl listening to this show right now, then you you absolutely know what good uh, talk is and music. Yeah, so. have excellent taste watching this show. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm trying to get through this story. Sorry. Hope nobody's sleeping yet. But we get okay. I think I'm I'm, I'm guessing I'm 11 okay. or 12 because what what it, what year is the creatures? 82. You would know. Okay, that would make me nine. Yeah. Wow. That's so I'm nine. Yeah, so I'm nine. <laughs> so I'm nine years old, and I come into this place, and I can hear 
it it doesn't sound like that little record player, you know. It's and but what's who's playing? Wendy on the plasmatics, yep. and she's wearing dental floss and and electrical tape over her parts. So I get my dose of rock and roll right off the bat, you know, as a nine year old. And she she's cutting a TV in half with a chainsaw, and I don't know what's going on. All I know is it's scary as hell. And uh, we get up kind of close, you know. We're thinking that we can stand. You know how in between bands people loosen up a little bit at the concert, right? That's about the time we hit the floor down there. Okay. And here's my mom taking us down there, and we're staring. Oh, whoa, whoa. Soaking it up. You know, because that kick drum, when I walked in there, when Wendy O and the Plasmatics were playing, it, was, it wasn't that little tink, tink, tink on the stereo. It was a thump, thump, thump that hit you in the mm-hmm. gut, you know, and it, and it was scary. It was yeah. so big. Oh, yeah. It, for a nine-year-old to take, you know what I mean? It's like, Jesus. What this is? What is this? And that wasn't shit because Kiss was twice as loud as that. So we get up kind of close, and this is the era where they had the drum set on the on the tank. Oh yeah, that literally a, a war, like a tank that you would have in war with a you know the turret and is that a turret, turret. or is it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're idiots. Right, and yeah. by the way, uncommon gonna, stout makes you an idiot it. too. That's right. We're just gonna wing it and make up our own stuff. So anyway, the barrel on the tank. Shaft, well played. shall I say? Yes. So in between, for some reason, in between the the bands, they test this thing on the tank. Boom! Confetti flying out of it. I don't. Maybe it was an accident. Yeah, maybe. But it goes off. My buddy starts crying. We're nine. Yeah, yeah. And and I would tell you if it was me crying because I'm not afraid to say I started crying, but I didn't. I was like, kind of fell even more in love with what was going on at the at that time right. and that's when i realized that my buddy wasn't made for this mm-hmm. he was just liking it because maybe i liked it oh okay you know what i mean mm-hmm. to be my buddy right and then boom and he's hmm, hmm, crying and he wants to go back and sit in the bleachers and my mom <laughs> see this is this is bad parenting because but it's not because i was a good kid and anyway so i had to go back with my buddy to the, the bleachers to sit with him and um because by the time, you know, he was crying, Kiss comes up, the lights go down, boom. You are the best. You got the best. And I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Everybody pushes up, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm going to die in here. I'm nine. And they come running out. Right. And they come out with Creature of the Night, the oh, first cool. song. Nice. And Gene spinning circles, cord flying, every, you know, and, mm-hmm. and stuff happening that you've never seen. You know what I mean? I've seen posters and record covers and seen them on some TV shows and this and that, but I've never seen Kiss like that. You know, they're running out here screaming, jumping around. It, it just seemed, in my mind, I remember, it seems like Paul Stanley was swinging back and forth on like a Tarzan vine or something. <laughs> and it just looked like a circus. And, wow. And scary and blue lighting and weird and and I'm loving it, you know. And my buddy's crying and I have to go back and sit with him in the bleachers. My mom stays there. Oh. Yeah, and says I'll meet you at that bathroom right over there when the show's over. Be there, yeah. nine year old. Yeah, you go back. I want to stay and have a good time. Yeah. So I watched the concert back there, and then after the show, my mom made a comment on uh, how. Gene Simmons, do you realize, Brian, that he had the side of his pants were cut out? You could see his butt. <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't really re- notice that part. She's like, well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was there to look at his ass. <laughs> she was commenting on that. She liked Gene Simmons' ass. You know, no, Mom, Gene Simmons is an ass. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, down the line here, looking at uh, what's going on at Rascals, another one of our sponsors. The first thing, May 3rd, they've got Battle Red. Kings, Heavyweight, and The Last Glimpse. Some original bands around here. Go give them a shot. And then on uh, the 4th, the following night, The Hooks are playing, and that's Kenny's band himself. He's a drummer. I don't know if you guys oh. knew that, but he's, he's going to be whooping ass, and he's a whoop-ass drummer, too. Anyway, that's his band. And then on the 10th, you got House Arrest, so go check that out if you feel like it. And on the 11th, they got Flashpoint, who I guess will cover everything from like, Godsmack to Heart to, to everything. So, you know, got a chick singer. And, uh, uh, there was a secret one on the 17th that they couldn't nail down, couldn't, you know, so. But then on the 18th, they got Lynn Allen in there again, you know, Billy and the Boys. He's going to be on the show coming up here pretty soon. Very excited. Uh, next week, I think, or a couple weeks from now, we got an interview with him coming up. He'll uh, be a showcase show. So, um, And then on the 25th, they have First Oppression. And on the 31st, Funktastic Five. Can I say that any more cool? Oh. Funktastic Five. Nice. So anyway, so wanted to give a shout out to Rascals for live entertainment because that's the place, man. Thank you. Want to go see some bands? That 
Thanks, buddy. I'm thinking about, thinking about something, Jeff. Yes. I feel like I'm going to be enlightened right now. Well, no, I was, you're not. Okay. If, if you might actually get dumber. Okay. But my suggestion was, I was hoping that um, this is going to be really weird. Right. I don't know whether to do this in the KISS segment or in this one, but I was thinking today when I was outside with my daughter all day, and God, she can run me ragged. <laughs> God. So, yeah, because the wife had a, I'm going to the mall day, you're oh. having a kid. All right. And I, and I didn't realize how taxing that can be. <laughs> so much appreciation to the wives out there. But, um, so I was thinking, you know, I was trying to every, when I could think. So I was, you know, I, there's a lot of players around here. And I was wondering if we could do a guitar contest kind of section. Send in video of them shredding on the guitar and we'll pick like, you know, the top, we'll pick like the top. Very cool. Five, and then we'll have the people that listen pick the 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 top three, and then we'll narrow it down. You know what I mean? All right. And you know <clears throat> they don't have to send us several videos, but it's the same one video. Just whatever your favorite lick is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Would that be fun? That would be fun. Yeah, I'm not gonna do a contest of who can hit the highest note singing because I already know who that is. Oh, who is that? It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it's John Kiss from. Uh, I agree. From Simon Says Uncle. Jesus Christ, that guy can sing. <laughs> he got some pipes. Have you ever sang in a band? I have not. Well, like, see, so, about professionally, I, in basements. Well, not, not to be whatever, but I have. Mm -hmm. And the, I tell you what, it's the most... Some people I, th some people wonder what it takes to be somebody that can get up and sing in mm -hmm. front of people like that or be an entertainer like that. And, man, I, I think it's an insecurity, believe it or not. Okay. There, I think it has something to do with trying to prove... To themselves, because uh, a lot of it was the battle of when I was in high school, I wasn't exactly the most popular kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't a nerd by any means. Right. But I was not like the guy in invited to all the preppy, you know, parties. And thank God, because they were boring anyway. Right. Oh, yeah. All the Metallica, all the, they called, at Rocky, they were called the loggers. They were the kids that sat out and smoked cigarettes in the parking lot. They were called loggers. Okay. I didn't smoke in high school, but then were the cool kids. <laughs> then were the ones that you want to go party with because, you know, the guys with the Metallica shirts, the guys out there that were sneaking beers at lunchtime and shit. The, <laughs> the preppies were mostly getting together and listening to, to, to Duran Duran and, and, like, you know, you know, like doing like this in the basement, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and you're like, I'm out of here, man. That's a, that's no the Metallica fun. guys want to smoke a joint and eat some <laughs> Twinkies, man. We're going to that. They got pizza and weed, man. Mm-hmm. And I didn't smoke weed in high school anyway, so. <laughs> but. So going back a little bit, so you started, you obviously, St. Ace Fairly wanted to play guitar. So what wanted you to sing? What? I, I make jokes about it because everybody else, you know, these younger guys are growing up listening to, you know, Pantera and Metallica, yeah. and they got the long-haired, like, metal guys. Edgy that and rough. That they're growing up and they're emulating. Because let, let's face it, when we, when we grow up, we're basically emulating everything that we've already seen. And, and, and kind of taking the, our favorite things that we can, um, talent-wise or appearance-wise, emulate. Oh, yeah. And spitting it back out into our own, like, metal turd. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. I'm sorry to say it, but that's kind of what we're doing. You know, and so what I always wanted to be like was I always wanted to be Sebastian Bach. You know what I mean? I always thought, that's the guy I wanted to be. Right. You know, and I remember when I put Drop Hammer together and some of the first couple gigs we played... You know, because when, you, when you're singing in front of people, people think that they need to tell you who they think you sound like when you get off stage. Yes, they do. I don't know why that need is. They're obligated they do. to do that. That's yep. what they have to do. They have to say, Oh, you sound like Man, Sebastian. you sound, no, 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 no. Oh. I, sang, I sang, came off stage, and, of course, the friends that I kind of half-assed knew, um, Hey, man, you sound just like Giddy Lee. And really? I'm like, I don't want to sound like in my mind, I'm sounding like Sebastian Bach, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know what, who, who you just heard, but I, I was singing like monkey business, you know? Yeah. And uh, no, you, you sound like the guy from Slaughter or whoever, you know, somebody yeah. that I didn't want to sound like. Right. I wanted to sound like Sebastian Bach because he had that grit and that thing that everybody liked. Mm -hmm. But man, to get that, to, to sound like that, ooh, that's a good voice right there, man. It's solid. It's solid. It really is. It's, it's, it's edgy, it's smooth. Sebastian Box is singing for Skid Row in case if you're watching this show you know that but um, man who didn't want to sound like Sebastian Bach I did absolutely good. so anyway when you know 
my first gig doing that, people were saying, oh, man, you sound like Gator Lee. And I never wanted to sound like, you know, living in the limelight. Because you know, that, that's what they're they're saying I sound like. And mm-hmm. boy, I wanted to sound more like, you know. Well, and it's gritty. not bad because obviously Rush has been around forever. People like him. But, but it's not where you're going. It's not. I was I was thinking of something totally different in my head. So you have to decide, <laughs> you know, is it coming across the way I thought it was going to be? And, you know, you're dealt. What, what my point is about your voices. If you're a guitar player, you can go out and buy a Marshall, a Saldano, a Mesa Boogie. You can get whatever you want, whatever kind of amp you want for its sounds or what it can do. Um, you know, like your ACDC is going to be Marshalls, you know. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Pantera, I think they were doing Ampegs or yes. yep. something like that. Um, so you get these different tones and different sounds out of a guitar, you know, and then you can get a, a Les Paul or a Strat. So you're going to have two distinct different sounds there. And uh, the worst thing that can happen is one of your strings pop, and you put a new string on it, and you're back in business. A vocalist, you get one voice, and you're dealt that when you're born, and you can either, you know, make it, you can stretch it so far this way and this way, but it's not going to, you're not going to be born with a Giddy Lee voice and then be able to turn it into a Phil Ensemble voice. Right. Your tone is your tone. Yeah, you just can't do that. So... That's what sucks with singers. You know, you're like, I so want to be able to do what Phil Anselmo does right here, but it's just not. You can't. No. You no. Know. So, so the Matter key. Matter of fact, he can't even do what he used to do. I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. But the key is to find out what you can do and what you can do well. And my problem was I was trying to emulate things that I wanted to be able to do, but really could have just kind of calmed down and tried to stay a little bit more in my range. But... I digress. I could hit the notes, but it's just hitting the notes with the fervor mm-hmm. and the tone and the, you know, that Sebastian did was just slave to the grind ruined it for me because <laughs> I wanted to emulate that so badly. Yeah. Oh, it's. And what you don't realize is that's take after take, blended takes. They get two weeks off to come in and do this one vocal. You know what I mean? And And when I was a band going to the studio, we had to pay by the hour so we had to do a whole record in like eight hours right you know what i mean so <laughs> the voices change after a couple songs or a couple yeah. takes even and it's, the last thing that you do is the vocals right it's, it's always the last thing so you always do like your drums first and then you do all the guitars and your bass and then you throw in the vocals at the end right it's always the last thing and that's usually where you're in the time crunch and you don't have that much time left so that's usually what gets the short end of the stick. So. You got to be spot on when you do it. Absolutely, and the, you know the whoever's running the board will be like, "You want to do it again?" And you're like, "How much time we got left? Like a half hour." Oh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we need to get because we still have the mix and all this stuff. So, it was tough back then. But now, you know, now that I'm older, I wish that I had the technology that I have now because uh, there's a lot of good albums that didn't sound very well because of production and now you can do it in your room in your basement how we met going back probably 10 years now is it well even before that when i got introduced like oh some mutual friends knew you i don't even remember how we met man i tried you know, to talk to d about that I don't, it was it at that well you said you met me before yeah uh so anyway i had some mutual fr- mutual friends that knew you and hung out with you and you had an apartment over there by the gallery mm. and they're like, that oh, would yeah. be the radio dj guy right yes when yep. one of, okay. yep. and uh he's like oh you gotta meet this guy you guys have a lot in common and Blah, 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 blah. Down the road, a couple years after that, even never ran into you. You're playing over at Screamers. 
Oh, is that when you met yeah, me? Yeah, the first time. And he's like, oh, let's go up and talk to him. I'm like, all right, you know, I'll go, go introduce you guys. And I don't know if you were playing that night or had played or getting ready to play. I could not. I don't remember that. But uh, I walked up and, he, you know, you're talking to him. And he's like, oh, hey, this is uh, Jeff. And, I, you know, was, I told you about him or whatever else. And you're like, hey, what's up? And walked on by. And I'm like, mm-hmm. And I know it's you know if you were you I think you were playing I said whether you had played or was getting ready to or not but I was like oh that's all right all right I mean I know it's his deal but I thought maybe you had to polish your pants or something like that <laughs> thank you <laughs> and I'm sure you've always wanted to get that off your chest and the whole polish the pants thing that's funny <laughs> that's funny shit no I don't take any offense to that listen the, the the thing is you know people don't care that are listening right now probably about this but. Uh, once upon a time, I was in an original band that was doing what most of these guys are doing that we're showcasing now, which is trying to you know make a make a you know statement or be noticed. Um, and the band was called Drop Hammer, and I wrote all the material and and I had a pretty stomping ass band that played the stuff. So anyway, I, so I had the band, you know, and uh, we had well, originally. I don't know if we want to get into the history of this, but on another show, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so I had a band that I was trying to do my thing with. And, uh, you know, as a singer, you don't want to talk to everybody in the crowd before you're singing because you're going to hurt your voice, especially my voice, because it was pretty delicate because, uh, again, I was Getty Lee <laughs> or Slaughter or whatever. I was no Sebastian Bach or right. something like that. But, and, you know, I was really trying to defend my voice. And on top of that, I was really uncomfortable with people that I thought were wanting to talk to me because they thought that I was something cool. And that made me really uncomfortable because I really didn't feel that way. I, and if I did start going into that mindset, I started to feel even dumber, you know? And so I was having this conundrum of battling on who I wanted to be. Did I want to be this normal guy to people? Because I'd much rather talk about football with right. people than, you know, how do you do that lick? Or like, you guys are kick ass. You know, it was, it's a really weird thing. You start a band and you want compliments. You want people to talk good about you. And, and then when they do, you go, you get uncomfortable and you, and you kind of want to just talk about something else. <laughs> so it's really kind of, a, well, for me, it was that way. Right. And you know, right. That's how it was. So I was like, you know, I played it off, you know, whatever. And for there'd be another time. Cause I understand that as you're kind of, you're, you're really at work. And then, uh, you played, which was a great band seen you guys several times. And it, it looked like it was fun to even be part of it. But anyway, down the road, off and on, ran into some other mutual friends that you had knew. And we had a, I don't know, probably two or three hour conversation at Lolly's one day. Really? I, yeah. I wish I, I know I remember having a good time there, but I don't remember it being you that I talked to. Yeah, see. So that I'm, sucks. I'm, I'm memorable like that. But <sighs> but I might have had a bitch girlfriend with me at the time that was trying to pressure me to get out of there. And she was okay for a little bit, but yeah, I think we just cause we kept talking about music and we straight off. And, a little and bit. women hate it when their men have a good time, <laughs> and they don't, and they want they like, are you having a good time? And it's not because of me. Then we're leaving. <laughs> so so then we talked, and we obviously were off and on. You know, because sometimes you get feeling like you're the only dude that likes Tora Tora or or <laughs> Dangerous Toys, Dangerous Toys, yeah. or any of them bands like that, or, yeah. or have even heard Operation Mindcrime. You know what I mean? Right. And it it gets wearing on you, you know, because you know when you talk to younger people, you're like, haven't you ever heard Operation Mindcrime? And they're like, what's that? And you're like, you if you don't know what Operation Mindcrime is, then fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's upsetting. We, well, we're old now. Yeah. And that's the music that we listen to and what we came up listening to. And I'm, and I'm okay with it still. I'll admit to it. Yeah. Never have, you know. Never never wavered from it. So, but anyway, so we had that long conversation and been friends since. And that's why. So I feel it's like it's the only place I feel like you went astray is picking your football team. I, I'm going to go back to this. <laughs> I didn't pick <laughs> I didn't pick the football team. The football team picked me. <laughs> All right. I was. Um, sorry. I was seduced. <laughs> Oh really? By by the badness? Yeah, and if anybody gives a shit, which um, you know we're not trying to act like we're all big and interesting to listen to, but everybody's got their stories, and this might provoke some reason of why you picked your team. Yeah, because I mean, and I've asked you that before. We obviously there's the Bears. Everybody's a Bears fan. Everybody's a Vikings fan, a Packer fan. So when you are, you know, even a Cowboy fan, because they are America's team. But when you find somebody that's a Seahawks fan. You're not going to get me to come, you're not going to get me to say anything nasty. You're just not. You, you can try all you want, but we'll just see. We'll just see. 
Because, listen, Redskins fans are like this. I just talked to one the other day at one of my jobs. I went there and, and I had a... The one other my, one? And my, <laughs> the, the other guy in the Quad Cities that's the Redskins All fan. Right, right. So anyway, we agreed, we both agreed that as long as we beat the Cowboys twice a year, we do not care if we go 2-14. and 14. I have noticed that a lot of years. We have never gone 2-14. and 14. <laughs> But I would tell you this: we could be getting whooped by everybody, and then and the Cowboys could be undefeated, and we could meet at your house, and the Redskins could give you a fight and probably beat you. Tell me it's not true. It's true. That's why we practice for the Cowboys. <laughs> we practice for two games a year. And like I said, a lot of seasons I've seen that. Yeah, and it, and and by the way, we might go off into football sometimes. We might not. Basically, what we're going to do is drink beer and talk about whatever we want to talk about. Yeah. And hope you guys get interested in it and it sparks you to want to say what you want to say. Yeah. But I digress. People ask me, go ahead and ask me, why did you pick the Redskins to be your team? Because you don't live in Washington. You live in Davenport or Quad Cities. Right. Did you just ask me that? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I was getting there. Well, the reason I picked the Redskins, you know, I, I wonder how big of buttholes we look like right now. Oh, anyway. I picked the Redskins because when I was first started playing football, flag football. Do you remember flag football? I do remember Anybody flag football. Anybody play flag football? I think everybody did. Okay. Well, I played for the Hallberg Redskins. Okay. Okay. That's the team they put me on. I didn't sign up for them. There was two Hallberg teams because Rock Island was big enough that they had to have two different teams. Okay. So they had the Hallberg Redskins and the Hallberg Rams. Okay, and mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not kidding you when I say that these guys had the it wasn't like they just had a red helmet for us. And they called us the Redskins. They had the real authentic logo, the burgundy and the stripes and the wow. Indian head and the braids, the whole thing. And uh, the Rams had the real, you know, the the mm-hmm. the real deal. And so I remember going into the locker room the first day when they were like, "Okay, Miner, you're on the Redskins," and okay, and then so and so, you're on the Rams. And they split us up. Mm-hmm. So I go into the locker room for the Redskins, and I see all these helmets in there. And I knew that I was going to be on this team. And for some reason, it just all like made a, it made a big glob of loyalty right then to that logo. The, the, and something about that Indian profile right. and the feathers. And, the, and, and it, didn't help, it didn't hurt that the Redskins were winning Super Bowls then, too. <clears throat> anyway. So, uh, well, not Bulls. They won... Well, they had John Riggins, Joe Theismann. It was back in the day. Daryl Green, Green. You know what I mean? And yeah. they were, and I, and I remember going, well, I better check out this team since I'm going to be on the Redskins, the Hallberg Redskins. Mm-hmm. I better check out the Washington Redskins. Well, yeah, because you were like a, a minor league affiliate. And they were whooping ass. <laughs> and I was like, this means something. Right. You know, so. And since we're being honest, <laughs> the logo is pretty cool. I will get that, give you that. Whoa. I know, right here. Whoa. I stated it right you here. You know, that's the reason cool. I did the whole show is to get you to, to admit that. Uh, that's it. That's all you're getting. Did you just say you like the Redskins well, logo? since I took over the show a little bit ago, I figured I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> you you just admit you like the Redskin I, logo. I've told you that before. But listen, my favorite guy in Kiss has a star you, on you his probably, eye. You probably were passed out when I told you, but. Do you understand what? that the Cowboys are a star? I, see? And that's, po- that's the connection. Star. See? That's my connection. God, dude. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why wasn't there ever a Redskin, like an a Indian Kiss character? Because he was in the Village People. Bruce Kulick should have been the Indian. He he might have been, oh. but the Village People already took it. <laughs> anyway, so we should probably get to our Kiss show All right, let's, because let's, that's what we're going to talk about anyway. So yeah, we're, we're, we're so off the rails right now. It's not so, even funny. Well, you know, it, did we get everything out of our system on this for this little snippet? I think so. Okay. So okay. <sighs> Thank you for, and by the way, seriously, if you guys click play on the Stupid Minor Disturbance Radio or video or whatever the hell we're doing, we totally dig it, and we're glad that you did. Um, go check out these bands that we're talking about. Um, oh, I wanted to, the guys that are email. we're getting a bunch of emails on the Minor Disturbance uh, Radio page on Facebook, and I dig that. we got a lot of bands that are saying, hey, check us out, and this and that and other thing. And trust me, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to showcasing, not showcasing, but mentioning and getting you guys uh, some web addresses and stuff like that. But this is our first, like, you know, um, uncharted flight for Minor Disturbance Radio that we've wanted to do. We wanted to get this out so that people can kind of see what we're doing here. We're just going to talk. And you might get mentioned on the next one. Hey, friend us on Facebook. Put up some stupid shit on Facebook. And if I see it, we'll probably talk about it. And you'll be famous on the Minor Disturbance Show. That's right. (laughs) Oh, yeah. By the way, congratulations, Dougie. Doug Brundy's won the. Uh, he did good. The acoustic jam to open for 
Ario and uh, uh, Sticks and Ted Nugent tonight. Very good. Actually, as yep. we're recording the show. Very good. He's uh he's already probably done. He's done. He's done. He's back. He's, he's back in the dressing champagne. room right Sh- now. Sh- champagne. Sip, sipping champagne and yeah. and uh, looking at titties. Yeah. Because you know this business is all champagne and titties. That's, that's it. That's all it is, that's man. That's all we do. So, um, congratulations, Doug. Man, good job. And uh, oh, hey, cheers. See, every time we do this, I think we should be cheers. We should. Yeah. Oh, smack myself in the head with the kiss cup. <laughs> <laughs> Bear River beer is good. Um, I think I covered everything for this show. Like I said, I wanted to keep it brief and just kind of get into some stuff and have a little fun with you guys. And please email us. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you want us to have different segments like that, trust me, I'd love to hear some guitar players. we got some shredders around here, and I'd like to, you know, show you guys what's around here because there's really we're not looking for just one winner. I just want to show how many guys we got around here that can rip. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, let, let us know, man. And thanks for tuning in to Minor Instruments Radio. Thank you.